OpenMRS wrapped up their December 2018 Implementers Conference in Nairobi, Kenya. And one of the sessions they had was an enormous, about 150 person, I would say, brainstorming session. And this post here will be a summary of the 1,551 ideas that were generated in that session. And we're going to do this in two parts. And so the first part is going to be a overview of the entire session, all summarized together in about uh, three minutes. And then the rest of this post will go through each of the six discrete prompts that were collected during the session, one at a time. So you can tune out after about three minutes from now if you want just the high takeaways. There were two big themes that came out of this brainstorming conference. The first talked about the OpenMRS community, and the second talked about the actual product, the electronic medical record system. With regards to the community, the overall theme was as follows. We need to deliberately strengthen and grow the community. And the way to do this is to first explain better what OpenMRS is and the positive impact that electronic medical records have on healthcare systems. We need to provide tools that make the decision to implement OpenMRS in a facility or in a government easier. Tools that might estimate, for instance, the potential costs uh, to implement and operate the software. Then, when someone is interested to implement the system, we need to provide much better documentation, training, and support to these implementers and for the uh, clinical personnel who will be then using the system. As part of growing our community, we need to bring in new types of members into the community. We have a lot of developers in the community, but we also need to add non-developers, patients and stakeholders, and the expertise and diversity that they bring in. We need to build a common vision ultimately, of how everything is going to tie together and where we want to go uh, as a community. Because the reality is, is that most of our developers and implementers are working in very many different uh, settings around the world, and we ultimately need a certain common core vision of where we want to take this product if we can bring our uh, different efforts together. Well, let's talk about the actual product now. The big th takeaways of what people want in this product, which we call OpenMRS, is a strong, robust electronic medical record. And some of the improvements that they want to see is they want the system to be easier to implement. Ultimately, many people spoke about wanting to be able to install it in the cloud, be able to run it essentially off of a uh, website without even having to set up your own servers to operate the system, to be able to operate and get up and running with an open MRS installation without even needing developers. And when the system is up and running, it needs to have a really intuitive user interface so that it makes it easy for new users to get on the system and to make them to be uh, keen and eager to want to use the system in their clinical care. The system itself needs to work on mobile devices. It needs to work offline, online, in low connectivity environments. It needs to work at the actual point of care. And the system needs to scale. It needs to be able to grow to hundreds and thousands of care sites within a single care network. And there was a lot of talk about the importance of having shared libraries, being able to borrow from other implementations from neighboring countries, things such as shared dictionaries, shared concepts, uh, shared indicators, shared workflows, forms, clinical decision support, and shared reports. And specifically when speaking about reporting, uh, we need to have a better way to be able to see how we take data in through clinical forms and clinical encounters, how that data gets transformed, aggregated, and then ultimately reported and shared as indicators, and really creating a straightforward pipeline that makes it easy for new organizations uh, to meet their requ required reporting needs by government organizations. The system needs to be interoperable. There needs to be uh, able to work not only with other clinical systems, but also other clinical equipment, such as labs and radiology. And 
it needs to be able to be customized and configured to an organization. But the hope is that, you know, there will be a common core, perhaps 80% of the tool and never requires any customization or configuration. And this will allow organizations to really put their developer time into building uh, better workflows, better tools, and not building core components, which we hope to share throughout the entire OpenMRS network. Well, this is a pretty amazing wish list of uh, what people uh, would like the system to do. And we've certainly got our work uh, cut out for us in the coming uh, months and years ahead to try to meet this. Well, that's a summary. We'll go through a little bit more detail now of the six prompts that were uh, reviewed during that brainstorming session. As I say, I encourage you to uh, read the written summaries. We have uh, word clouds, we have uh, pictures, and we have a lot of information on the Google Sheets, which are linked here, where you can read the original 1,500 entries uh, which were typed into Google Sheets. So a quick word on the process. What we did is we generated six questions or six how might we prompts. And each prompt was put up on the board in front of the room, about 150 people. And everyone was grouped together in groups of around four to six members around a table. And that team of four to six people would, uh, would write down ideas, one idea per sheet of paper, and then put those ideas on the table in front of them. And they would announce to the group what their idea was as they put it down. And then other people would build on their ideas. And this brainstorming went on for about 67 minutes. At the end of that, um, we went around and we collected all the tickets. There was about two to 300 per session from all the groups who had just been brainstorming on that one prompt. And then we put up the second prompt. And we did this six different times. Here's an example of some of the tickets collected from one of the prompts. So let's go in through that first prompt then. The first prompt was on the theme of reporting, and it stated, how might we make reporting less of a headache? Well, the answer was that reporting can be improved by streamlining the reporting uh, pipeline, meaning that we need to have tools where it's easy to take data in from the clinical form, aggregate it, and then ultimately report it. And there was a lot of talk about trying to encourage different uh, founder, funders, governments, and uh, disease surveillance and evaluative organizations to try to create standards, to try to create shared indicator definitions, and to, to create shared reporting requirements in order to reduce the burden placed upon implementing partners in meeting their data requirements. Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot more information here. And if you're watching the video version of this, you can see th these are the original tickets that were typed into the system, into the computer verbatim as collected after the session. And you can view this original document on Google Sheets by clicking the link found here. We also have a text summary of that this topic on the blog post as well. We move now into the second prompt, which was under the theme of diversity and inclusion. And the prompt reads, how might we attract and engage new and existing users to the OpenMRS community? Actually, it read, attract and engage new and existing people to the OpenMRS community. Well, the big themes that came out of this is that we need to more clearly explain the story of OpenMRS. We need to uh, explain to people better why they should uh, join OpenMRS, how they can join OpenMRS, and when we invite new users to OpenMRS, we need to make it easier for them to get up and running, make it easy for them to get involved in the community, to receive mentorship, to receive training, and ongoing support. And we need to then recognize those who are in the community about the great work that they're doing and share both their individual recognition and the work they're doing with the other global community. And ultimately, one of the ways which you can really attract uh, new and existing, uh, or 
users to OpenMRS is through the creation of a really amazing product because that will bring in talented individuals. And as I've been mentioning, we need to continue to grow the diversity of the individuals we have in the community to include non-developers, uh, those with skills in uh, evaluation, reporting, marketing, uh, media production, um, journalism, uh, more clinicians. We actually need a lot more patients in the community. We need uh, more members from other stakeholders, such as governments. We need more uh, valuative organizations, such as uh, uh, CDC, uh, various different disease surveillance organizations. And they all need to be part of the OpenMRS community because ultimately they are all the beneficiaries of the systems which OpenMRS uh, supports. We move on to prompt three now, which was under the heading of implementation. The prompt, how might we make implementing OpenMRS easier? Well, as you can see from this word cloud here, the big theme to come out of this is better documentation. We really need to improve the materials we have uh, for training new implementers. We need to create new tools such as video and audio uh, trainings and tutorials. We need to create better documentations for uh, the actual code uh, and ways for people to uh, configure and use it. And we need to support these implementers when they are trying to set up new instances of OpenMRS in their communities and countries to be connected with uh, mentors and those who have already gone through this process. Now, of course, one way to make the whole installation a lot easier is to create an installer, to create a, a one-click to deployment um, method where you can use the system out of the box, where ideally you don't require uh, technical capabilities and developers. This will allow uh, many more uh, smaller clinics and smaller instances to, to use the system with lower overhead. And of course, you can make implementing the system easier if the system also uh, is uh, easier to use from a user interface perspective, because then you require less training. Again, I highly encourage people to go read the original documents. Um, there are so many ideas uh, written down here, which are, you really need to see yourself. We move to the next theme under question prompt four, under pain points, how might we make scaling up OpenMRS easier for you and your users? Well, just to bring people up to speed, you know, the first question was on reporting, very concrete. The second question was on uh, trying to understand how to grow the community. Then that third question was trying to understand how to install and implement OpenMRS. And so, of course, this next question now is on trying to scale up OpenMRS. And so this prompt asks people about what we can do to make it easier to grow and to scale once you have it up and running. Well, a few big themes come out of this. The first is, again, there needs to be tools to calculate the costs to grow, to uh, add more installations. We need to provide more training to the actual users who are using the system. We need to improve the system uh, from a technology perspective so that it, it works better offline, so that the sync capabilities are better. And the data really must flow uh, seamlessly through the database uh, down to reporting systems, integrate different patient unique identifiers, and make it uh, easier to uh, standardize, really, the installations as they're uh, being added to the system. We move up to prompt five, talking about now the future, not about how might we make OpenMRS the world's best EHR by 2030. And so this is really trying to uh, think about not an incremental step, but where we can go as a community. And some big themes emerge. You know, one, we need to build an amazing product, which we start with the user experience and we start with the patient experience. And the user needs to be able to uh, effortlessly be able to use a voice interface, 
be able to use it on any type of device at the time. There needs to be all the buzzwords of the day, artificial intelligence and machine learning and natural language processing and, and tools which make it easy to provide patient care. There needs to be built up a uh, community around this software tool, which is able to also build their own technologies built on top of this OpenMRS platform, which might be provided additional uh, uh, clinical decision support and workflow engines. And uh, we need to ultimately uh, build a product which has a broad functionality, meaning that you, it's a really a full-featured EHR, ideally something that works in the outpatient setting, something that works in the inpatient setting, and it's built on existing standards, which is fully interoperable, for instance, with FHIR protocols. And then we come to Prompt 6, coming together and community, with the question of how might we build and sustain the OpenMRS community dedicated to tangibly improving world health. And as you can see, the big theme here was that we want to create a community which has the capabilities inside of it to solve global health problems. And so the way which we're able to help do that is to build technologies uh, such as electronic medical records that help improve global health. And so in order to meet this challenge, we need to articulate again the mission of OpenMRS better so that more people join, so that we can grow our community, that we can get better skill sets, and we can create more diversity of talent and expertise within the community. And this will allow us to tackle these new health challenges to help solve the problems we've been articulating in the previous summaries about the technologies and tools we need to create and to ultimately uh, set us up to have a successful impact on global health. And this is going to be a big challenge. You know, we need a lot of resources, a lot of engagement, a lot of uh, support from all stakeholders, from patients to public to donors to uh, governments to uh, private clinics which are using the system to uh, WHO level organizations, disease surveillance, and ultimately uh, there's gonna be a certain amount of uh, funding which is required to really make this happen. And this has to be a, a global backed effort uh, to get here. And that is the summary. That is what was discussed in Nairobi on the first week of December, 2018 with uh, OpenMRS uh, representation from really around the world. This was a big brainstorming session. We've never done something this large uh, at an OpenMRS conference before, but it really uh, was a tremendous success, both for those who were there. Uh, it was exciting, it was energizing, and it had a lot of good conversations which came out of it. And it's been useful from the community as far as being able to create these summary documents which are now available publicly on the OpenMRS Google Drive. And we're going to continue the conversation, of course, in the OpenMRS Talk Forum. And that will be uh, continuing over the coming weeks and months as we work together to uh, see through this vision as we've been discussing. Look forward to hearing everyone's uh, suggestions, especially those who weren't there in person. This is really just the beginning.